Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 19 in the book of 1 Timothy. We're walking through the New Testament seven minutes at a time. And today I'm going to tell a great story. It's I'm going to recall one of the greatest moments in Olympic history. So stay with me. We're on a bit of a theme about training and godliness. Um, and, and Paul is encouraging Timothy, hey, stick, stick to godliness, stick to the Bible. Uh, work out your area of gifting. Even though you're young, be a good example in conduct and love and faith and speech. Why? So that you can uh, s- to help save everybody. Uh, bring them all home with you. So that was yesterday. He also cautions Timothy to be careful about himself. Watch yourself. What a great word that is. Uh, you know, watch out for the logs in our own eye. Keep keep close watch. On who? First of all, on ourselves. Attention must be paid. Christianity is a bit exhausting in that in that way. So he's saying to Timothy, hey, train up, toil, be it a good example. And then today he's going to leave some instructions for the church and we're going to reduce it down to one word, which is encouragement. Listen to this. This is from 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 1. Do not rebuke an older man, but encourage him as you would a father. Younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters in all purity. So encourage the older as a father. Do do this. Rather than rebuke him, uh, do something positive. You can do this. Keep going. Remember who you are. Encourage a younger person as a brother. Encourage older women as mothers and younger women as sisters in all purity, which means honorable public conduct. Don't be ashamed of your behavior if it becomes public. All right, let me just, before we get to the good stuff, let, let me re, re, talk about the word rebuking. It says here, don't rebuke an older man. In in, in 20 verses, he actually is going to say to rebuke those who persist in sin. So there's a place for rebuke in your life, in my life, in the New Testament, of course. Why? Because sometimes we need it. Sometimes we need a little chastisement. Uh, you know, we need to smack a few concepts down. But today is not that day. Today is the day for encouragement. Okay, so here's the story. So the year is 1992. We're in Barcelona at the Summer Olympic Games. And it's a 400-meter race. It's the semifinals. And there's a British runner. The runner's name is Derek Redmond. But actually, he's kind of the least part of the story. It's his father that... that, uh, is the the big hero of the story. So you may remember, if you've ever seen it, you'll never forget it. Uh, The the gun goes off. These guys go flying down the track, uh, you know, the best in the world, the fastest in the world, and about maybe 100 100 meters into the 400-meter race, uh, the runner, Derek, pulls up with a torn hamstring. So he, he falls to the ground, and then you can see sort of this light bulb that he wants to finish and he gets back up and then he hops. And he starts to hop towards the finish line, which is a long way away. And this goes on for a, a, a little while and the crowd, you know, starts starts to cry or starts to cheer. And then uh, and then the good part starts. And then his father uh, somehow gets on the track and comes up to him and supports him and then puts his arm around and they're, you know, the runner's weeping and in agony. Um, and then his father helps him and assists him all the way to the finish line. He said at the end of it, whatever happened, he had to finish and I was going to help him. We started his career together and we were going to finish it together. So his life, uh, the father, Jim Redman, was known for this moment of true encouragement and best defines encouragement more than anything I can, I can tell you. The reason being, and what got me thinking about this today, is the Greek. Well, the Greek means to call to one side. It's more than we can do, you can do it, which is kind of how we define encouragement. 
What the Greek defines encouragement as is we can do it together. So with the exhortation comes an invitation. And with the comfort is, is a, as a call and an assistant in assistance in care. So Jim Rebden, I think, best defines what is encouragement is. 80,000 people cheered. One person encouraged. That was Jim Redmond. 80,000 people tried to give him a shot in the arm. And one person actually gave an arm to. 80,000 people verbally pushed the runner. And one person carried him. 80,000 people championed him. And one came alongside of him. 80,000 people lifted the spirit. And one person lifted the load. The moment that Jim Redman, his whole life became known for this one moment. His whole life was reduced to this and defined by this one act of true encouragement. So today, let's think of someone who has a ruptured hamstring in our life. It's easy. You'll think of a few. Who's limping down the track towards the finish line and may not be able to make it? Who needs this act of encouragement, which which is assistance and coming alongside and an arm around the shoulder? Who's going to need some help to finish their race today? Who can you encourage? Let's use Jim Redmond's act of encouragement and definition of encouragement. More than just you can do it, but we can do it together. Thank you for listening.